Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 and today I've got a tank review for you again. This is the WZ-132, the tier 8 Chinese light tank and I like to describe this vehicle as the medium tank driver's light tank because it just handles a lot like a medium tank so maybe if you're usually not too good in driving light tanks but prefer medium tanks, then maybe this is the light tank you're looking for because it handles very similarly to a medium. That's the reason also why I really like this tank because I'm actually not too keen on driving light tanks personally, but with this vehicle it was really different. Now we're going to have a quick look at the tech tree because it is actually quite interesting for the WZ-132 because you've got two options to grind out the WZ120. You can either go through light tanks or through medium tanks. Now I decided to grind through the light tanks just because in my opinion they are way better vehicles than the medium tanks. I mean at tier 6 the medium tank might be better because the 59.16 is just horrible but tier 7 I mean it's kind of equal but at tier 8 the WZ132 is just way better than the T34-2 and you will be playing these tier 8 tanks for quite a while to grind out 175,000 experience to get the WZ120. So if you're looking to get the 121 of the WZ120, I would personally recommend going through the light tank line, but it's basically personal preference. Actually, there are two good arguments to research the WZ through the medium tanks and that is first of all if you also want to grind out for 113 then you'll only have to split up one tier later at tier 7 so that means that all in all you need slightly less experience to get both of these tanks than if you would split up at tier 6 already. The other advantage is that obviously if you do not want to keep one of these tanks here you will be able to transfer your medium tank crew to your tier 9 tank by losing less crew experience on them than if you retrain them from a light tank to a medium tank, so that would be another argument. But honestly, that wasn't enough to persuade me to grind through the T-34-2. It just has got no gun depression, it is not particularly fast for a medium tank, it's got not very good armor honestly, the gun is somewhat underwhelming, so I just didn't see how this tank beat the WZ-132. So I just went for the light tank. Now. Let's have a look at the research tree. You should first of all research for suspension because otherwise you cannot mount anything else. And after that, you should get this 100mm 59-100T gun if you haven't already researched it on the WZ-131. Now, although I personally used the 85mm gun on the WZ-131 because I thought it was better, than the 100mm, you should still research the 100mm before you buy or unlock the WZ-132 because that just makes the grind a lot easier on the WZ-132. Now after that you should probably get the turret and the tier 9 gun. Now the thing is that you've got the option between two guns again on the WZ-132, very similar to the WZ-131 where you also have the choice between an 85mm gun and a 100mm gun. Now on the WZ-132 you also get a choice between 85mm and 100mm. And we're just going to quickly pull up these two guns next to each other. Now the rate of fire obviously is way better on the 85mm, therefore it loses 17mm of penetration, which is actually quite a lot. It also has got 50 hit points less alpha damage, but it's more accurate and has got the same aiming time. Now, which gun should you get? In my opinion, the 100mm gun is better. Although I used the 85 on the WZ-131, at tier 8, I think that this gun is just better because you will see tier 10 matches a lot more often. And just having that better penetration and better alpha damage is just much better I think than having slightly improved accuracy although it's not much better and vastly improved rate of fire because honestly in many situations you'll just be able to get one or two shots off and then they'll just hurt way more in the 100mm gun than when, when you're using the 85. So that is my opinion obviously if you prefer DPM over flat out alpha damage then maybe you'll want to go for 85 but I would recommend going for 100mm. Now, even if you decide to run the 85mm gun on this tank, you still want to research a 100mm gun because otherwise 
you will be stuck at tier 9 using the tier 8 gun from the WZ-131, the tier 7 light tank. And believe me, you do not want to drive this vehicle with the 100mm gun from the WZ-131. Now, obviously, it's not a laugh driving this tank with the tier 9 gun either, but it's a lot better than with the tier 8 gun. So, you really want to get this gun no matter what. So, there's one last interesting thing about the tech tree of the WZ-132, and that is the engine. Now, if we compare the upgraded engine to the stock engine, we see that there's actually no difference whatsoever between the two engines, except for their weight, because the upgraded engine weighs 10 kilograms less. The engine power is exactly the same, the chance of fire is exactly the same, so why on earth would you upgrade the engine? Now, the reason why you could do it is because the upgraded engine gives you a lot more hit points in this tank, module hit points. That means that it will be harder for enemies to take out your engine and set you on fire, so that is an advantage. Now, it is not necessary, you don't need the engine, and I would only get the engine if you really want to elite this vehicle. I do want to elite it because for me this vehicle is a keeper, but if you're just focused on unlocking the WZ120 as quickly as possible, then, you know, definitely go ahead, ignore this engine, you don't really need it. So, let's have a look at the rest of the stats. You get 1050 hit points, that is very little. That's actually a low hit point pool, even for a light tank, because if we look at the French light tank, the AMX 1390, which, you know, is French, so, so it really should have no hit points at all, it gets 50 more, so you really, in the matches you'll get into, you will be able to take three hits, or maybe even only two, depending on what's shooting at you. So you have to be very careful. You only weigh 24.6 tons with my loadout. That is actually not too light though for a light vehicle. Compared to the AMX 1390, for example, which weighs 15 tons, that is actually quite heavy. So that means if you are engaging other light tanks, you can actually most of the time feel free to ram them because often you'll come out on top on that trade. The engine power is very beefy with 520 horsepower allowing you to reach a top speed limit of 64 kilometers an hour. Your specific power is 21.13 which is quite good. It could be a bit better on a light tank for example the 1390 gets specific power of 23.19 but the difference is very marginal and you won't really notice it too much. The traverse speed is 56 degrees per second, that is excellent. Combined with a 48 degrees per second turret traverse speed, that means that you'll be able to circle strafe and parasail enemies all day long. So this tank is very good at doing that. The armor now is somewhat of a letdown, it's 50mm at the front, 25 at the sides and 20 at the rear. 55 at the front of the turret, 35 at the sides of the turret, 20 at the rear. So really, you can't expect to bounce any AP shells, but the good news about this is that your frontal armor will not allow any tanks to overmatch you. That means that really you cannot be fired at with HE ammo, which is the case with the AMX 3090, which is overmatched by tanks with a caliber of over 120 millimeters. So that's an advantage that you have. This 10 millimeters more ammo, although it won't make any difference against AP shells, will help you against AG shells. That is quite nice. Also, the ang armor is angled very well, so actually now and again you will get the uh, lucky bounce. You definitely can't rely on it, but you will get lucky now and again. We already talked about the gun, but we only really compared it to the 85 millimeters. so I just want to quickly talk about the gun itself. And in its tier, this is one of the best light tank guns you can have. In my opinion, it is only there's only one other gun which is better than this on a light tank, and that is the gun that the German RU251 uses. That is slightly better, I think, just because it gives you more DPM and so on. But really, this gun is very, very good. It is very effective and it really packs a punch. And many people don't expect that for a light tank. Now, the view range is 400 meters base, but with crew skills and equipment, I managed to pump that up to 452. Now, you might be thinking that there's no point in doing that because the maximum view range in the game is 440 meters or is it 445 i'm not it's i think it's 445 meters or 440 one of the two so actually you cannot spot enemies f further away than that 
But the thing is that also enemies have got camel ratings. So, for example, they're concealed in bushes. They've got a camouflage crew. They use a camouflage net. And then this 452 meters view range is still calculated. So that means you'll be able to spot them earlier than if you, say, only had 445 meters. So I hope that makes sense to you. The signal range is excellent at 750 meters. For me, it's 782 meters, so that is very nice. For crew skills, you definitely want to pick up sixth sense, first of all, for your commander. That is essential. Then um, you want to have camouflage on your entire crew. Get that as a second skill for your commander and for first skill for the rest of your crew. Camouflage is so important on light tanks and this tank in general. It's just so, so good. It's such a useful skill. It allows you to make really good plays and really just helps your gameplay. Furthermore, I went for snapshot on the gunner, off-road driving on the driver just to make me make it possible for me to circle strafe and outmaneuver enemies even on soft terrain, and the loader, which is also the radio operator, learned situational awareness on my tank to improve the view range. And now for the commander, you could also go for recon, that would be very useful on this tank, that's actually the next skill I learn. You should also probably get smooth ride for the driver and maybe even controlled impact. Now the reason why I would maybe even get controlled impact on this tank is because although obviously you shouldn't be ramming enemies usually except when they are light tanks, many enemy tanks will try to ram you because you are light. So by getting controlled impact you will deny them a lot of the damage they could do there. So that's useful. And then also I would even maybe get Brothers and Arms on the entire crew at some point because that just boosts your overall performance. For equipment I went with a vertical stabilizer, uh, gun rammer and coated optics. Now the first two pieces of equipment are absolutely essential, you really need them. Especially vertical stabilizer is so useful in this tank because this is one of the best light tanks for firing on the move and that will just really improve your accuracy while driving. Then I decided to go for coated optics because I personally don't really play this tank too much as a passive scout. I like to roam around the battlefield and pick off isolated enemies and do some spotting while I'm doing that. So for that kind of play style, coated optics are superior. However, you could also go for binocular telescope if you find that you prefer the passive scouting playstyle, which I usually do on most of my light tanks, but this is just an exception. Alternatively, camouflage net would also be good, but only if you use passive spot. So that's the itemization I would go for there. And yeah, that was basically all for the garage review. So far, this tank is very good. I really enjoy it. And let's see if it can keep up what it promises in some gameplay. So here's our first game. We've spawned on Malinovka, which is an awesome map for this tank. It's just one of the best tank for uh, one of the best maps for passive scouting. As you can see, I'm still using binocular telescopes in this game. And what I'll do now is I'll go to a very aggressive spotting location where I hope to win the battle basically for my team. Now. I just want to quickly apologise for the bad frame rate here, I'm not quite sure what's the problem, somehow this is a quite an old version of World of Tanks, this is I think 8.10 or something, and it's just not working too well, so I'm sorry for that. Now unfortunately this Batshot 25T here stole some of my glory because he decided to come along with me and he got a lot of the spots that otherwise I would have gotten. However, he's retreated. Now you can see that I've taken this position here. I'm stealth behind this bush. Now I'm going to stay stationary to activate my binocular telescope. And as you can see, I'm spotting all these tanks here. And my team is firing at them. That means I'm getting experience for all these shots. I get 50% of the experience, but uh, my allies get rewarded for doing the damage as... Um, reward for passive scouting here and one thing that I forgot to point out in the garage review but which is also very important for light tanks is that your light tanks do not lose their camo rating when they're on the move. Now all other tank classes get reduced camo rating when they are moving but for light tanks it just stays exactly the same so that is very good because that means that I can change, change positions here into a more aggressive spot because I haven't spotted anything right now so uh, I'm hoping to get more spots off now. As you can see I'm lighting up these guys here. Unfortunately my team is not taking shots of them. 
That's somewhat of a shame. But probably they're just not in position. So now I'm just gonna, you know, bring up my tent, build a campfire. But unfortunately, I've been spotted, okay? So, um, yeah. I quickly take out the object 140 and then continue to retreat. As you can see, although I'm reversing through soft terrain here, I'm very, very quick. And obviously, I've stealthed again, otherwise, I'd be taking shots right now. So. Right now I'm at a bit of a loss what I should do because, you know, I can't really go back up there because then I'll be spotted. So I decide to locate behind this bush here and see if I can spot enemies at D5. Because that is also a very uh, nice camping spot for tank destroyers, medium tanks. So I'm just going to accelerate the replay a bit here because otherwise it's just going to be super boring because, you know, Passive scouting is not exactly the most interesting thing in the world. However, I also pick up nice spotting damage on that AMX 5120 there. And also, which is very, what is very important when you're playing light tanks, is that you should uh, uh, assign some key, for me it is T, with which you can request fire at enemy tanks. Because that way you can get your team to focus fire, hopefully, on enemies that you're spotting. You just have to decide which tanks they should prioritize. Now, good tanks or targets to prioritize are usually those who make make the most damage. So it's often artillery or autoloader tanks, or just generally tanks with high DPM or alpha damage. Now, usually, obviously, if you have a ch uh, choice between focusing a Waffenträger or V100 or a, a, a mouse, then obviously you should take the Waffenträger of E100 because he's a lot easier to kill and does a lot more damage. Now I'm trying to be a bit more aggressive now because I realize that the enemy base is not being guarded too much anymore. So I just decide that I can roam in and look for the RT. And sure enough, there it is. So I'm sorry that that practical just was a bit bugged. I'm not quite sure what that was. But um, we pick up our third kill on the enemy RT. And, yeah, now it's basically just uh, us chasing down the rest of the enemy vehicles. As you can see, this tank is super mobile, and the gun is very deadly if it just gets to fire at lightly or medium armor targets. Here's an enemy IS-8. Oh, this guy could be a problem for me. Oh, thank God he misses. And I pick up a kill. I'm not quite sure. I think in the game I actually... Went into sniper mode there because that would have been quite stupid if I didn't. I just think the rectangle somehow bugged in this replay. I'm sorry for that. So. Scores 12 to 6. We basically have this game in the bag now. Just going to speed it up again. And. It's just a bat shot and an RT left now. Just a question if he gets them first. And the bat chat is in our base. So where is the RT? Probably the RT went for a swim. No, he didn't. He's just back there hiding. But we know where he is. So, okay, yeah. He was killed by our artillery. So that was that game. And let's just quickly check out the post-game stats before we just jump into another replay. So we managed to pick up 50,000 credits, 1,600 experience, a first class mastery badge and a patrol duty medal. In the team score we got the most experience, although we only dealt just above 500 damage. We picked up 4 kills, which was also the most of the, in the game. And um, yeah, we can see we fired 5 shots, all 5 connected, all 5 penetrated, so that just shows you how good this gun actually is. We didn't deal too much damage, we received 3 hits, obviously all 3 penetrated. Received just short of 1000 potential damage but he is the most important part and that is that we managed to pick up almost 7000 spotting damage and that is although our team wasn't really firing too consistently at the targets we lit up so that just shows you how effective this tank can be as a passive scout and also in the later part of the game we were able to roam around the map and pick up the last few kills so that's just what this tank really excels at is playing passively as a scout in the first half of the game and then later on just cleaning up and we spotted seven enemies 
uh, damaged five, destroyed four. You know what more do you want? This was not an amazing scouting game. I've seen better ones, but I personally I don't claim that I am the best scout player. So probably if you are really enthusiastic about light tanks, you'll be able to do way better than this even. And I mean this already was quite a nice result. Also, you can see that this tank is actually quite cheap to run. We only had to pay about 1,000 credits for our expenses and could keep 40,000. That's a result which I would be pleased in in one of my tier 8 premium tanks, actually. So that's quite nice. But um, let's head into the next gameplay because the next one will be a bit more exciting. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in a second. So, this game we've spawned on Winter Himmelsdorf. This is actually a horrible map for this tank because light tanks just don't excel at playing city maps. However, actually with a WZ-132, it's not too bad because as I pointed out earlier in the garage, this is more of a kind of a medium light tank, if you get what I'm saying. And I hope this game will demonstrate that. So... I jump over this little undulation there and turn right. Now I just want to quickly explain what my plan is because this is an encounter battle on Himmelsdorf and usually everybody or almost everybody goes up to the hill and obviously the hill is strategically very important but that means that hardly anybody ever goes to the train tracks in the west of the map or to the centre and as a very manoeuvrable quick light or medium tank you're often able to maybe at like three or four or five minutes into the game, you very often are able to cut through the center of the map and uh, ambush enemies that have rushed to the hill or something. So that is my plan right now. However, I get cut off by a T-54 and um, he is quite a dangerous opponent for me, so I have to be careful here. That's why I am retreating into cover because in a straight out 1v1 fight with a T-51 uh, T-54, sorry, I will almost always lose. So I decide that I will not really affect the game at all if I stay there. So I start uh, attacking the enemy heavies in the heavy lane, as I like to call this road here. However, that allows the T-54 to come round and take flanking shots at my ally. He gets taken out quite quickly but now i'm in a very good position here because an ally t34-3 has come round and is now going to start firing at the rear of the t54 he has to draw on cover now however uh, the problem here is that our enemies have managed almost managed at least to take control of the hill and as you can see there's hardly any competition for control of the counter base and the railway tracks so I decided to come round here and um, now I'm going to try to do what I actually wanted to at the beginning of the game which is loop round and start taking shots at the enemies from behind. Now I decided to ignore that enemy T-54 because as you can see our allies really need help on the hill. I also decided to ignore the object 704 and I'm just going for this Carnarvon here straight away. Good driving by me there. <laughs> okay, so he misses me and I decide to ignore him still and I'm just going for the hill. That's where I have to go here. Because really, if the enemies gain control of the hill, unless my team can cap the base before they get down again, which is quite unlikely, we've lost this game. So this Carnarvon has followed me around and oh yeah, there's an enemy AMX 1390. That looks good. My first shot misses. What? That was ridiculous. That one missed. Okay. Never mind. I've got time. And oh my god, he's reconnected. Okay. So, I just want to quickly explain to you how you have to handle an engagement between an... Um, WZ-132 and an AMX 3090 as a WZ-132 player because the AMX 3090 has got an autoloader and you don't and you've got quite a long reload time especially if you're using the 100mm gun really you should avoid 1v1 fights with an enemy AMX 3090 at all costs however in this situation 
I really don't have a choice, so I have to fight him. Now, what I do first was I load high explosive ammunition because the AMX 3090's armor is only 30 millimeters thick at the front, which is the thickest part of the armor, and I've got a 100 millimeter gun. So that means that my gun overmatches the armor of the 3090. That means my high explosive shots will always penetrate unless I hit space ar spaced armor like the tracks. So that will give me an advantage. That's also a good argument to use the 100 millimeter gun over the 85 millimeter gun because you cannot overmatch an armor of the 3090 with the 85 millimeter gun. Next, it is important to try to dictate the pace of the, uh, of the engagement. That means that you have to try to trade shots one for one with him. You should not be sitting in the open, letting him unload his entire clip into you, but you should be drawing behind cover between each shot. And last of all, uh, and which is also quite important, is because you almost weigh 10 tons more than the AMX 1390, it can often be very good to ram him, because that will mean that, I mean, you just get another advantage in this engagement. So, let's see how this goes. First of all, I've been trapped. I completely mess up my shot there. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm just not really playing too well here. However, I juke his shots and... Um, He's still unloading on me, but I think now he's fired his entire clip and right there you can see because I dodged two of the shots I was able to avoid a lot of damage there So I take his tracks that was a very lucky and good shot and now I am going to finish him off So there we go and um, that was my first kill, but that engagement cost me almost all my hit points and the enemies are still winning, so I really have to do something now. And uh, yeah, I mean, really that was not perfectly played by me against that 1390 right there. I should have played that better, honestly, but in the end it worked out for us, so uh, alright. And now I am going to help the I guess I'm going to help my allies um, up there or actually I'm going to, yeah I'm sorry I didn't I didn't see this replay before so I'm going to take uh, shots at this object 704 and now he's turning around so that's good because he was distracted from my ally tiger 2 but now I really have to run for it because uh, this guy really wants to kill me so draw to cover and I'm just not going to bother engaging this object 704 anymore now because uh, he just wasted so much time driving after me but I'm just going to go round but then the T-54 gets taken out that means that I can switch my attention back to the object 704 there he is with his rear turn to me a nice shot into him and drive on and this is really the kind of playstyle that is very good in the WZ is just, just roaming around the map and taking occasional shots when the opportunities are good at enemies that are just exposing their rear and side armor to you. And oh my god, I really didn't expect that. That was well played by the object 704. He predicted my next movement, however, it was not quite enough and I missed my shot there. It's Tiger 2's face hugging him. Luckily the object 704 missed there, otherwise I would have been totally dead and I finished him off picking up my second kill. So now the odds have swung back into our favour actually, the score is 13 to 12 and there's only an enemy T-13 to T-34 left. And those are two tanks that can be very easily trolled by the WZ. Just because they've both got very bad hull and turret traverse and you can circle strafe them all day long. This IS-3 is on very low health but I should be able to one hit this T-34 now. So I come around the corner, he's not facing to me and I finish him off very cleanly there. So third kill and now it's only the T-30 left. I saw which way he was driving, he probably wants to pick up this kill on the IS-3. So I'm coming around and finish him off as well. Four kills and um, although I misplayed at some points in that game, for example, while I was engaging that AMX 1390, in the end, I hope 
that this game just showcased that even on a city map, which actually usually isn't a very good uh, environment for a light tank to do well in, you can really uh, have a very big impact with a WZ-132, even in tier 9 or 10 games, because you are so maneuverable, you've got a very punchy gun, and this tank's just hilarious to drive, and let's have a look at the post-game stats. So, I managed to get an ace tanker medal for that game, 38,400 credits and 1,900 experience. The team score I did best by far, getting 1,255 experience, which was quite a nice result. Also, 2,700 damage, which was the second highest on the team. I've always competing with the likes of the T54E1 and the Waffenträger. And um, we see that we fired 20 shots, which only 14 hit, which was partly due to my bad aim in this game. But of these 14, 13 penetrated, so that's quite a nice result. We dealt 2,725 damage and received 4 hits, of which again all 4 penetrated, um, dealing 950 damage. And uh, we spotted 3 enemy vehicles, damaged 5 and destroyed 4. So, as you can see, in this game we didn't really have the role of a scout but more the role of a medium tank really, of a very maneuverable medium tank. And that's really why I just enjoy playing this tank so much. It just has got this very nice playstyle that is not just sitting behind a bush and waiting for enemies to you know, be spotted by you. I mean obviously you can do that too, but you can also play it like I did in this game and it's just so much more fun in my opinion. So all in all, what do I think of the WZ-132? For me, this is probably the most fun light tank in the game. I think it is actually maybe even the best, although the new light tanks that have been introduced recently, for example the German tier 8 light tank or the American T-49, are both very strong vehicles too. So I'm not sure. In, in just random battles, I think that... This tank here is just the most fun to play of all the light tanks really, just because it plays a lot like a medium tank. If you enjoy medium tanks, then you'll probably enjoy the WZ-132. Anyway, for me, this tank was a blast to play, and it's definitely a keeper for me. I hope you enjoyed this replay, and maybe you got inspired to pick this tank up. Tell me what you think about the WZ-132. Do you think that, there are, like, that it's not really a viable choice anymore after the new light tanks at tier 8 were introduced recently, or do you think that it's still very competitive? So uh, please let me know what you think, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up below, or even subbing to my channel, and I hope I see you next week for another video. Goodbye.